Happy New Year, everyone. Thanks for joining me here on Teslanomics Live. I'm your host, Ben Sullins. And what we're going to do today, um, recap a little bit about the new year and some stuff that happened last year, and then also get into the latest Tesla news from the previous week, which basically are just tweets from Elon. And so I'll break down each one of those, give you my thoughts on it, and then we can have a discussion. Uh, if you are joining me on Crowdcast, thank you for, for joining me again. We will get to the Q&A at the end. And if you're new here, if you're watching this after the fact, what we do is we'll go through the news segments, then we'll get to the Q&A. And after the video posts on YouTube, I will put a pinned comment down below. That way uh, you can jump to whatever section that you want. So you don't have to sit through because this does usually run uh, a little bit longer, about an hour hour or so. Let me just fire up the list of stories to cover here and we will jump right into it. All right, first and foremost, um, let's talk about uh, some predictions that me and my buddy uh, had last night. And so we were just kind of, um, he, he's a Tesla owner as well, and we were just talking through this and it, he thinks that self-driving is going to come very soon. Uh, and I don't think that self-driving is going to come nearly as quickly as he does. So uh, here are my predictions and, and I just want to explain them a little bit to you guys. Uh, first is that uh, it'll be 2023 before we see a reasonable amount of of self-driving cars um, that still require some human assistance. And so the thing what I'm saying there is that, um, you know, we already have autopilot, but autopilot isn't really self-driving, right? It, it, it kind of keeps you in the lane and, and, uh, and make sure you don't, you don't hit people and stuff like that, but it won't turn, it won't on, um, get on or off a freeway, uh, you know. So what I'm saying by 2023, you'll be able to get into your car, hit a button, and it will take you to wherever you go. However, uh, the roads and things won't be fully ready for that. So that way, um, it, so what I'm thinking is, is that it'll still require some human assistance. Um, and this is, I think, the primary reason that I think it's much longer than a lot of other people is that, um, like the internet, when the internet first came out, um, it was kind of slow, honestly, and people didn't understand it because there was a lot of infrastructure that didn't exist yet. You had to you had to build, you had to make computers that were fast and have cell phones that could access the internet before the internet really took off in this insane kind of uh, uh, force that we see in our world today. So it wasn't until kind of computers were built that could handle it and make it accessible that it, that it really became uh, the force that we know. Now, I think self-driving cars are the same way. I believe uh, that we will will have to have some, I mean, at the base level, you have to improve road quality and road conditions in a lot of places in the United States and a lot of places throughout the world for it to even be possible with just cameras and what is built into the car. I think you may see additional things happen with sensors. And now they can be very cheap sensors. They could be very minor adjustments to the roads, but I'm thinking that we're gonna need some infrastructure improvements to really make self-driving a possibility. So I'm pushing pushing it out um, to 2023 before we really start seeing full, fully autonomous vehicles. Then uh, five years later in 2028 is where it starts to become more prevalent and self-driving then, in my opinion, would be something that uh, still needs some human assistance from time to time, um, but in general could be done uh, mostly with, uh, with the car itself. So you really don't, don't need a human much at all. Then I think we're going to start to see in 2033 the first cars without steering wheels sold at all. Like just, they, they just don't even exist, you know? Um, and I think this is when things are gonna be really, really interesting. Oh, uh, back on the 2028 thing, I think you'll see highway lanes designated as self-driving. And my buddy was speculating that we would see the entire freeway uh, or highway designated as self-driving, meaning you, you when you get on, you have to have a self-driving car. Um, I don't know if that's really gonna happen, but something along those lines, I think that that, that would be really good. Um, now, uh, after that, uh, you know, down the road in 2048 is when I'm guessing we're going to see driving become illegal. So that's 30 years from now. And I think this is when, uh, self-driving cars and the roads and everything will be so advanced and so good that, we'll have to look at it as, as a country uh, and probably other countries would be, you know, there first, but we'll have to look at it and say, is this feasible? Like it doesn't really make sense for a human to drive anymore because it's been so long at this point. Imagine at this point, 2048, you're 15 years out from cars being sold without steering wheels. Um, 
that's when you're going to look at it and go, why, you know, w this shouldn't be illegal because, or this shouldn't be legal because it's going to cause too much damage. Um, and, and these are just, you know, kind of my bold predictions. We thought that'd be a fun tradition every year, kind of reassess some stuff like this. So I'm curious uh, what you think. You can actually find this post if you want to comment on it on the community tab of my channel. Don't go there now because you'll leave the live stream. But anyways, uh, j just, just some fun predictions uh, for you. So I wanted to kind of throw those out. All right. Next, I want to just talk about one stat in particular uh, that I'm super proud of, and that is this one here, that in 2017, uh, I mean, it's actually more than this, but in 2017, uh, together, uh, we helped 57 people become Tesla owners, uh, and on top of that, the more important stat is that we saved 130,000 pounds of CO2 from entering the atmosphere. Um, and that's almost uh, 12,434 gallons of gasoline that weren't used because of you. And because you shared you know, my code or you shared these videos and then that helped people join the community. I mean, uh, just a year ago, we were looking, I think in, in 2016, we started out with uh, with like 800 subscribers or something like that. And now we're uh, uh, closing in on what, almost 56,000. So amazing year. Um, but the stat that I am most excited about is this one here. And I am really looking forward to what we can do in 2018. I don't know what's going to happen with the referral program. Um, if you guys are watching on YouTube, you see that we have the free supercharging link there to get free supercharging on your Tesla. That ends, according to the current referral program, that ends January 31st of, of 2018. So if you're on the fence at all, this may not be around anymore. And from then on, you have to pay for supercharging, which would be a big bummer. So uh, I think, you know, if you're on the fence, you have a little bit of time to decide, but uh, definitely go get that code. Um, it's free. You know, there's nothing, n no catch to you. You just get to use our code, you know, um, and, and we get another referral for it, uh, which, you know, could earn cool prizes. But really, you know, you get free supercharging, which I valued at about 2,500 bucks a year, depending on how much you charge. Um, and, or I'm sorry, how much you, you go on road trips and how much you use it. So um, yeah, there you go. Um, so go get it. Go check it out. Teslanomics.co slash TD. Get the code. And uh, let's make an impact guys because this is pretty awesome i'm pretty pretty stoked on this so here you go next we have the tweet storm all right and the, the elon has um, i mean geez i don't know i think there are nine of them here we have lined up uh let me just kind of run through them real real briefly and i apologize uh it is cold in here and I'm trying to keep my hands warm with the tea. Okay, first one is autopilot two. So Elon, okay, so to set this up, Elon on the 26th of December said, you know, wanted to, again to send a note of deep gratitude to Tesla owners worldwide for making a chance on a new company that all the experts said would fail. You're welcome, Elon. Uh, so much blood, sweat and tears from the Tesla team went into creating the cars that you truly love. Hope you do, yes, of course you do. How can we improve further? Love this. I love that he's going to Twitter for this. Uh, and then people, I mean, as you could imagine, I mean, what do you get, 14, uh, 16,000 comments. Um, and so there are a handful of here that he re responded to. So that's the context. Now, the first one, Sean Mahoney here is asking um, about Autopilot 2. He said, sorry for the delay. We have the most advanced AI neural net of any, co any consumer product by far. So it's going through exhaustive testing. Uh, the results are blowing me away though. And I, I think you will have a similar experience. So uh, let me just uh, unpack that a little bit for you. When you're talking about a neural net, you're talking about several layers, kind of like different filters, uh, different algorithms that are combined into what we call like a deep learning algorithm. And, and, and with that, you can do things like imagine computer vision, the way it works is, you know, one layer identifies objects. Um, and then, and you know, like, hey, that's an object, that's an object, that's an object. Then another one could identify people versus machines or animals. And, and you have many, many layers. And modern ones have hundreds of layers um, that each do one thing. So it's like a machine learning algorithm that does one thing. And combining all of these layers together gives you uh, a, a, an AI neural net, as he describes it here, which then would you know in, allow the car to be self-driving, for example. So uh, this, this is true. I don't know if the most advanced of any consumer product by far really makes sense because 
uh, I mean, it depends what you can consider a consumer product. Uh, Google.com um, could be considered a consumer product, which has, I mean, it's a search algorithm, so maybe it's not that complicated, but you get the point, where basically everything you do online with any web-based service uh, it pretty much has some some components of the of you know what he's describing here. So hopefully we'll see it soon. Uh, and, and and yeah, um, you know. So there you go. So I wanted to unpack that a little bit so you understood what he was talking about. Next we have one about windshield wipers on a Tesla that automatically change speed based on how much rain there is. Uh, coming very soon. So this is good, I guess, for people that live in places where it rains. It rarely rains where I live, so not too worried about it. But if you are one of those folks, you know, here you go. There's an upcoming change for you. Next we have uh, from Kabir. I love my Model S, but the browser is unusable. Hallelujah, I am with you. He has a couple of specific suggestions, which uh, I think are, you know, just details. But Elon responded saying it's terrible. Um, had to upgrade old Linux OS and a bunch of drivers first. Major browser upgrades coming to all cars in a few months. Now, there's two things about that. Um, and this is note, it will be slower at first until code is optimized. Fine. Uh, two things about that. One, I use an app called Teslab, which is amazing. It has an in-car dashboard that uses the browser, and it's very limited. And I think that the if once they open this up, especially if the, the browser does more than what it does now, uh, for example, the current browser doesn't have access to the car's audio controls. Otherwise, we could easily make the app play Spotify through the browser. Um, so you could get rid of the kind of built-in slacker radio and have a beautiful in-car dash experience that we can customize and build. So I think hopefully, They'll, they'll make updates like that, but the current browser doesn't support any of this stuff, so it really is limiting. Now, uh, the next thing about this, is he says, is that it's upgrades coming to all cars. Now, that is important because all cars means the Model 3. Uh, now, with the Model 3, currently, uh, it does not have a browser. So if they add a browser to it, again, this opens up apps, uh, the potential for app developers like the guys at Teslab to be able to use that browser as an interface to build kind of an own custom or you know advanced or new experiences. So I'm really looking forward to this because uh, I think uh, that a new browser with more capabilities will allow uh, other people to to enhance the the Tesla experience and stuff. So there you go. So I'm really stoked on this one. Next, uh, somebody asked about if the cameras, now this is a fa fascinating idea. Um, it would be great if the cameras would switch on and record if the car has been broken into. So if the window is smashed in, the cameras could activate and record. Elon just simply wrote, okay. Uh, I love this idea because, uh, I mean, I, I think, so Teslas have had sort of a bad rap about getting stolen lately, which again, is kind of ridiculous because if you look at the percentage of cars stolen, it's it's incredibly low, but hey, you know, anything Tesla related about a crash or whatever is like major news. So uh, there you go. So with this though, if this is possible, that would be insane. I mean, you could in theory uh, just turn the car off as well. Uh, the only thing I'm nervous about with this is, is that if uh, if this functionality exists, that means that it could be hacked and taken advantage of. And so, yeah, I mean, I'm a little nervous about that, like people just spying on you as you're driving, but I'm sure that they have a lot of, uh, that this is probably a good idea for, for certain conditions, and they probably could secure it well, uh, well enough. So yeah, there you have it. Next, we have the idea about a heated window via the app and possible to turn on the seat and steering wheel with the heat remote. So for people that live in colder climates, um, you can, you know, right now you should be able to turn on the uh, the, the heat in the car, but not the heated windshield um, or the seats or anything else. So yeah, hopefully that'll be in the next update, which I just saw this morning, there was a post by someone saying that they just got an update. So I don't know if it'll be in that one, but uh, coming soon. So if you're in a colder climate, this could be a, a good thing for you. All right, next we have some more updates um, from Mick Flashtube, love the name. Uh, the funny thing about this, he had several suggestions here, uh, or I'm sorry, MC Flashtube, maybe it is. Uh, <coughs> um, and Elon uh, talked about all of them, uh, you know, yeah, that all looks good except disco mode. And then that sounds like good cheesy fun. You know that's coming. Uh, they just had Santa mode. There's all these kind of Easter eggs built in, fun stuff. You know we're going to see dis disco mode happen very soon. So stay tuned for that. 
Okay, and um, this is a big one. Sam Crompton asks, well, whilst EVs uh, are a huge step forwards and green credentials are strong, if electricity production could be improved further, then we're really in a good place. And so Elon tweeted the response here, and this is really interesting because what he's talking about is uh, the future of Tesla, essentially, that sustainable energy production with solar and batteries will grow much faster than auto on a percentage basis. That would be a big focus next year, now this year, with primary remaining on a Model 3 ramp. Okay, so Model 3 ramp, then we're doing this. That's the strategy. Simple, simple as that. Uh, I love this because I'm with Sam and his point about EVs um, and how we could have a much bigger impact here with things like solar and batteries. And I agree with what Elon said. I mean, whether or not you're into Tesla or going to buy, you know, a, a fifty or hundred thousand dollar car is a different scenario than if you're a homeowner and you want to save money and free yourself by having kind of energy independence. Totally different conversation. Uh, everyone is pretty much that I know it's a homeowner is open to that idea. Um, whereas a lot of people are, you know, very anxious about electric cars. So I think that, that this is spot on and I'm really excited about this. I think that, you know, the biggest challenge so far has been the bad rap that solar city had, or at least the ones uh, here in San Diego. A lot of folks I know that even work in the solar industry and people have had bad experiences with them. So hopefully, you know, with, with a uh, Tesla kind of uh, cleaning house there and, and, and changing some of those things over. Hopefully that, that, that the tides will shift and they'll be able to, to kind of uh, really grow that rapidly. I do agree that um, it, it's going to be faster th than the car. Uh, and, and it's probably because of the strategy as well. Um, and also the market is just much larger. So very exciting stuff for Tesla in 2018 uh, based on this tweet here. I think it's pretty straightforward and I agree with it. Okay, next we have something from Leslie. Like I said, there's a lot of these. <laughs> um, <coughs> the navigation, okay, I'll tell you a quick story about this. So they're gonna improve the maps and navigation. Um, you know, I, I still kind of have a thing about this. I think you should just go with Google and, and what they're doing. Uh, it's just honestly, it's so expensive and so hard. Maybe they can do a better job. Apple tried to do a better job and, and they failed. So yeah, we'll see, but okay, quick story. Coming um, on uh, Christmas Day, um, I was up in Orange County visiting some family. Coming back down home to San Diego, uh, I hop in the car and I, I, I hit the navigation just to get an idea about the time. Like I already know the route, I don't need it. But it kept telling me to drive up and through this route um, on the 74 uh, through kind of the mountains and the hills over to the 15 freeway. And it didn't make any sense at all to me. It's like, oh yeah, this will take a two and a half hours. I'm like, it's only a 45 minute drive. What the hell are you doing? And I've had this happen several times where the, the navigation uh, wants me to turn around and go 50 or plus miles out of my way to try to find, to try to get where I'm going. However, here was the trick. Uh, there, tra there happened to be, uh, is very unfortunate, uh, a, 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 uh, two or three people that died in a, in a really bad car crash on the five south. And if you know the five south heading into San Diego, you know that it goes through a marine base um, at Camp Pendleton. And when it goes through the marine base, there are no exits. They're literally for 20 something miles, there's not an exit anywhere. Um, and so you couldn't, you know, so essentially it's not like uh, there was a bad backup and you could get off and find your way around it or something like that. You're just stuck. And um, the car knew that. <laughs> and that's why it was trying to get me to go up and around. Um, and then when I popped it open on my phone, because I'm like, this is totally wrong. I saw it on Google Maps as well. Then I checked Waze. And what I ended up doing was going and charging at the San Clemente charger, the new one, which is brand new. Um, which, by the way, I have an idea for you guys. Uh, let me know in a comment on this after. Uh, I should be getting my Model 3 in a week or so. Uh, but I'm thinking maybe later January, early February, it would be fun to do a Tesla Model 3 meetup in at the San Clemente Supercharger there. So let me know if you guys are interested in that in the comments or tweet at me or something like that. So, um, and if so, maybe I'll put some together and get other Model 3 owners. We can all have kind of a big party or whatever. So there you go. Uh, but uh, we went in charge of the San Clemente Charger and yeah, we had to take the 74. It's, it took us two, over two hours to get home, but on the way home, they just started opening traffic. So people were literally stuck there for like four hours. Um, so crazy. So while I am looking forward to better maps and navigation, 
I just had to tell that story because I was pleasantly surprised about how good it it, it is currently. Um, when, when I've always kind of thought of it as, as just really, really crappy. So there you go. Okay. Uh, now, Dustin Moskovitz, uh, who you may know, uh, kind of a famous uh, techpreneur, uh, has a thing about um, Bluetooth auto connect and all that. Um, yeah, they're going to change that. So apparently you can control the Bluetooth connectivity better. That's great. Uh, and then we get into the more interesting piece, for me anyways, a bigger story that we're going to see probably in 2018. Um, so uh, whoever this is, Vancouver Seed Bank asked, need an electric pickup truck, please. Elon responded with, I promise that we will make a pickup truck right after Model Y. Have had the core design slash engineering elements in my mind for almost five years. Am dying to build it. So, okay. And then, you know, just to follow on, somebody else said, will it be a F-150 class or larger? I'm hoping for a regular family size truck. Uh, he says, similar total size, maybe slightly bigger to account for the really game-changing feature I'd like to add. Don't know what that is. Maybe it'll fly. That'd be nice. Uh, so here you go. The Model Y is next. So I'm sorry, we're not even done with the Model 3 yet. Model 3 ramp will be coming online uh, and, and be up to speed very soon, I believe. Uh, hopefully, they'll be hitting the 5,000 cars per week by the end of March. Then, th then we're good. You know, that's kind of smooth sailing. Now we need to build the Model Y. I think in 2018, we're going to see reservations for the Model Y. We're going to see an unveiling event for the Model Y. If you don't know what the hell I'm talking about, the Model Y is basically what the Model 3 is to the Model S. The Model Y is to the Model X. So it's a crossover SUV type vehicle, uh, smaller probably, a bit cheaper, definitely, um, and, and a potentially bigger market segment than the Model 3 is. So I'm guessing this year you're going to see reservations for that and an unveiling event and we'll actually get a hold of it. That'll be amazing. That'll be fun. I'll probably reserve one at the very least just to then get it in a couple of years so that way I can do reviews of it and, and you know talk through that experience with you guys. Uh, and who knows, maybe I'll keep it, get rid, of, get rid of one of my other Teslas by then, but, but we'll see. So um, Model Y is next after the Model 3, then the pickup. We did see a photo of the pickup at the semi-truck event. It looks like this which is pretty hideous, and I don't understand at all why you would do this. I think it was just kind of a goofy thing where, you know, it was a smaller version of the semi. I could see this as a uh, as a, a, a commercial truck. Imagine uh, get rid of what's, you know, th they said you could put a truck in the back of our truck. Imagine get rid of that and just put a, um, a van, like, you know, a, a canister over it, and, and you could have a commercial vehicle. That would be fantastic and, and sell, you know, hundreds of thousands of those very quickly, I think. Um, but here you have it. So Tesla pickup truck, uh, I don't know if we'll know more about it this year. I, I'm guessing we'll see a Model Y unveiling and start taking reservations for Model Y. We're also going to likely see at least one, if not two, new uh, auto manuf auto plants uh, that they're going to build, so places where they actually make cars. We already know about the one in China, but they'll also probably be doing one another one in North America as well. Uh, Elon and Amber Heard were just seen, uh, I think they were vacationing in Chile, uh, which is kind of the lithium capital of the world, in case you were didn't know that. Um, so maybe they'll build one down there to build batteries and ship them out. Who knows what's going to go on? But 2018 is going to be a monster monster year for tesla um guaranteed we're going to see some new models released we're probably going to see some unveiling events some some reservations uh the semi truck you know maybe news about where they're going to build that still curious about my roadster we'll find out about that but that'll be a, a bit down the road all right um i think now it's time to move on to q a so let me stop sharing my screen on crowdcast i'm gonna cut out my camera because i know that messes things up and we will jump right over to, wow, 33 questions. Uh, that is insane, guys. Um, let's see how far we can get. So if you're on Crowdcast, uh, yeah, now is the time. Go ahead and make sure to go vote on any questions you have there. I'm going to start going through these. Um, and I'll try to make them a little bit bigger. That way you can read them easier there. Okay, so... <clears throat> First question comes from Guy. He's asked, when will Elon slash Tesla give us more info about the Model Y? There you go. I think it's going to be this year. Uh, based on the Model 3 launch history, it was available for pre-order. Yeah, I think that um, I think that Model Y you'll see this year. Um, I think they need a new factory is the big thing. 
Um, and so you'll probably get deposits down this year and then maybe in 2020 um, at the latest. Well, at 2020, I think you'll start to see them being delivered, um, hopefully, because hopefully they've learned again. And, um, and you know, it's, just, it, it's like anything. Once you do it once, you're going to get better and better at it uh, as time goes on. So, yeah, there you go. Thanks for the question, guy. Gary asks, uh, YouTube reviews of the recent Model 3 deliveries indicate Tesla has not solved all of its build quality issues, such as panel, glass, and chrome alignment. What do you think? Is this so? Uh, yeah, it's certainly doable or certainly possible. Um, you know, a, a lot of these things are kind of tough on that. And, and, and I'm really curious. I haven't seen um, all of them. I have been... It's funny, I don't actually get a lot of YouTube videos or uh, Tesla videos suggested to me when I log into YouTube. Maybe because I'm such a geek and I watch so many like space and science videos and stuff. Uh, but I, it wouldn't be a surprise. Um, I'm sure they'll fix them. It'll be simple fix. Uh, it's much simpler than the Model X issues were. So yeah, so I, I, I think I think it, it's, it's fair to say that that's likely. Again, I should be getting mine in a couple weeks. Uh, already been in contact with my rep to get a hold of it absolutely going to be sharing that experience with you guys but i'm not going to do it live i'm going to record it and edit it and put it together so it's something nice and, and condensed for you um so stay tuned um and i'll let you know if i have those issues thanks for the question gary uh jim asks now that there is a model 3 in my future i'm trying to decide about home charging what do you recommend as the smartest most cost effective option for installing a home charging facility so jim thanks for the question um i also want to uh to, to take uh, so I'm going to put together a, an online course, and I'm curious what you guys think about this, um, for new Model 3 owners, uh, because there's going to be a lot of folks, and there's going to be a lot of things here that Tesla doesn't really cover. Now, they'll explain the vehicle to you, but all the other stuff about charging it, about how to drive it effectively, maintenance and care, etiquette, all that kind of stuff, I'm going to put together an online course um, that kind of dives into that uh, more, more deeply. Cause it, there, there are so many scenarios that you have to run through. Um, I'll say this short answer, uh, the NEMA 1450 at home. Great. Um, you you may need to upgrade your panel depending on your situation. That's kind of the, 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 the bummer of it. And also depending on where your, your, uh, charging location is compared to your panel, um, could mean it costs a lot at my home. Um, just, it was like 90 plus feet of wiring and conduit and stuff. And that alone was about $1,200. Then the guy, you know, took a, an electrician all day to do it. So there was another 600 bucks. So yeah, it, it was pretty expensive to get to get installed at my house. Um, but I, I think it's 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 going to be good. Uh, or I'm sorry. I, I think I would recommend that because we have a 40 amp circuit. And so with that, I think I get like 26 or something miles of, of range per hour. More that more than sufficient. Um, I do know some other folks I'm talking to that are just going to plug it into a wall outlet or, or, or want want to try to do um, a, a dryer outlet, those kind of things. I, I don't think any of those. I, like I think you're going to want to get something installed if you can. Um, just know that the wall charger that you can buy, which if you have a nice looking garage, I'd buy the wall charger. You know, the one that looks like the Tesla destination chargers because it just looks good. You're really not going to get more out of that. Uh, it's not going to be faster unless you have a, a bigger amp connected to it. I'm sorry, a bigger circuit connected to it. So there's a, a, a lot of details there. And, you know, without knowing your specific situation, it's hard to make a recommendation. I'll say with my NEMA 1450, uh, other than it costing a lot to, to get set up, I'm very happy with the performance and I just use the, the mobile connector. So thanks for the question, Jim. And again, yeah, I am gonna be doing an online course. I'm gonna get some folks that are much more knowledgeable than I am uh, to join me in it. Um, so stay tuned everyone for that because that'll be hopefully announcing a kind of pre-sale of that very soon. So thanks for the question, Jim. Gary asks, uh, after shopping for months online for a used Model S all-wheel drive with Autopilot 1.0 within my budget for used Tesla, I have made I have made a Model 3 reservation. Oh, congrats. My expected delivery says the late 2018. All right. I expect it to be mid-2019. Has there been any new word on the number of reservations outstanding? Uh, no, I, I haven't seen anything about the number of reservations outstanding. Uh, we should get something whenever the next Tesla earnings call is. I I imagine it'll be late, late uh, January, early February. Um, and so at the earnings call, sometimes they divulge this, sometimes they don't, but you can almost uh, uh, reverse engineer it or, or as we'd say back into it based on the number of uh, customer deposits uh, withstanding. So you can see basically how many deposits people have put down uh, and the number, it'll be some stupid, stupidly large number, right? Like $600,000. And so you have, or I'm sorry, like $6 million. And so you have to look at that and say, okay, well, some of that's an S or an X, but probably the majority of that is a three, that is the model three. 
Now you have the semi, so the semi, I don't know if they break that out separately. So anyways, once we, no official news. Once we have the next earnings call, we may be able to kind of parse it out and maybe they'll just announce it. We'll see. Um, I do think that the Model 3 ramp is gonna be gonna be good uh, this year. And so, yeah, late 2018, uh, probably not, not, a, not a bad bet. Uh, and if you do get it, I mean, that, mean, that means that they're gonna deliver a monster amount of Teslas this year. Um, so yeah, thanks for the question, Gary, and uh, best of luck. Valerie asks, uh, when you configure and get to the payment page for the $2,500 final deposit, is there an option to make a larger payment at that time? I don't believe so. Uh, when I So if you guys didn't see, uh, I recently configured my Model 3, I, and I shared that with you guys on YouTube, um, and I don't believe there was a way to pay a larger amount. It was just uh, that's how much was due. Um, so yeah, that you did have to go through the, sec the segment about... Uh, about financing and, and, and what kind of financing options you're going to do. So uh, there's that, but um, but that was a different section than, than what you're talking about here. So, yeah. Thanks for the question, Valerie. William asks, uh, where do you think they will announce the production of the semi if Fremont is already bursting at the seams? Yeah, uh, maybe New U.S. Factory 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I, think, I think it'll be somewhere in North America, especially since the market is in North America. Uh, I think they they absolutely need it. Um, people have kind of people have been emailing me telling me that you know there's room at Fremont, but I, not according to Elon and not according to what I saw firsthand when I went there. So yeah, I, I think maybe North America, probably somewhere that is easy to get to from the Gigafactory. Uh, could be in Nevada as well. Who knows? Um, but yeah, yeah. Hopefully they're going to announce that soon because they absolutely are going to need one. Um, you know, in addition to the one that they've already kind of I don't know if they've officially announced it or what, but um, the one in China that everyone kind of knows about. So yeah. Joe asks, uh, please talk a bit about the difference in wheel size. Ah, other than looks, why should someone go for the 19 inch over the 18 inch? Um, what makes an investment worth it? Yeah, so somebody did a um, uh, analysis on this uh, with regards to uh, the efficiency and then the, uh, the the range difference. And so, yeah, I mean, the arrow wheels are obviously better, but that has a, a lot to do, um, I understand, with the, the hubcaps that are on them. Um, that's what I'm getting right now, but I'm probably going to switch those out for some custom turbines that this company's making um, that I have a connection with. So so I'll let you guys know about that. Uh, but check it out. It's on Electrek. I think someone actually did some real real good kind of testing of the different wheel sizes and in, in what it means. Um, so, yeah, it, it has to do with range. Uh, and, and the, the best option are the 18 inch ones that they come with. Um, and, and for me, yeah, I, I'm, you know, if I want to get custom wheels, I don't particularly like the, the 19 inch sport wheels. So yeah, you know, I'm going to go with a different option. And now that, now that customers have their hands on them, there's been a lot of deliveries recently. Um, you're going to see a lot of aftermarket stuff come out. So I'll share you with you whatever I get. Um, and I'll also kind of tell you about any good deals or anything I find, um, w with regard to that. Thanks for the question, Joe. Jim asks, has Tesla released the Q4 Model 3 production numbers yet? Uh, and if not, when do you think? Yeah, not yet. Um, don't know if they will announce them, uh, but if so, it would be on the next earnings call, which uh, just l let me check. It's ir.tesla.com. I don't think. Uh, yeah, it's not been set. Um, if you go to ir.tesla.com is where you'll see it typically. So, yeah, thanks for the question, Jim. Uh, Walt asks, do you think that the three will help avoid accidents with deer on the road? Uh, like with the autopilot and stuff. I don't know. That's a good question. Deer are smaller. Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not quite sure. I, I do know that someone was telling me that, uh, the, the autopilot, the, the automatic braking is not actually designed to work with, um, uh, vehicles and things that are just dead stopped on the road. Now, someone did do a video on YouTube where they had their friend on a bike and they, uh, approached them and, and they, it did stop. So, so there's that. So, We'll see. Yeah, good question, Walt. Uh, Walt asks again, uh, when you're feeling on the clip of the Model X that got hit in the left front car of a running red light. Hmm. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm not sure about that story, Walt. Uh, I, I didn't see that one. Um, I did see the one that was uh, uh, where the, the, a Model X hit a cop car actually on the freeway and that goes to the point of what i was saying where i believe the automatic braking is not designed for uh, vehicles that are stopped uh which seems crazy to me so so i'm not quite sure um what happened there thanks for the question 
Uh, Vic asks, have you seen a silver Model 3? I've heard that the actual production silver is not as stylish looking as the display Model 3. Huh. Well, so, okay, when I did the factory tour, they had the Model 3 there, and that was the alpha model. That was the silver one you saw on stage. And then when I went to this handover event, I don't know if we had a silver one. I remember seeing white and red and blue. I think that I think there was a I think there was a silver one. I'm not sure, but it was dark and it was at night, so I haven't seen one uh, up close since then. Um, I, I can tell you this though, just just if you've not seen one in person, it's striking how good this car looks. Uh, far better than any photos. It's it's hard to describe. So thanks for the question. Mike C asks, Model Three anticipated in August. Should I be concerned about battery life if I'm going to drive 35,000 miles every year? Don't think so. Uh, the battery life it doesn't have to do with uh it has to do with uh, kind of how fast and and how many times you go zero to 100 percent on the battery on, on the on the charging um so you know if you keep it kind of it depends on your driving habits i guess so if you just drive a lot every day that's fine but if you were to take it to zero like if you do a ton of road trips um and and, and guaranteed tesla is very concerned about this and and the battery does have an eight-year warranty so yeah, I wouldn't be worried about it unless you, you know, maybe 10 years out, you're worried about it or something. But for now, good to go. Don't worry about it. Carter asks, uh, when will the Model S X get a large refresh? Ooh, or will it be replaced with a new model? Great question. Thanks, Carter. I think we're going to see uh, some big stuff with the Model S and X this year. Uh, I, I desperately think the interior needs a refresh. The outside is pretty fine. I mean, maybe you can make some minor adjustments. I think they're both beautiful on the outside. Um, the interior, you know, they have these thick bezels everywhere. It's just, it, it, it could definitely be upgraded. Uh, it's still amazing, but... Um, I just think, you know, with the modern kind of designs, it, you could do you could do a lot more interior wise. Um, and then uh, I think the bigger thing is I, I'm, I'm predicting we're going to see uh, some new battery stuff uh, with the S and the X, hopefully much bigger batteries. Um, uh, and, and I'm not sure I'm, you know, I could be totally wrong about that, but it just kind of uh, it, it kind of makes sense with the Model 3 having the newer battery tech. Why would somebody go for an S or an X, you know, unless you just need the space? Um, it's still fantastic, but, you know, if I could get a better battery, better tech out of a Model 3, which is cheaper, why wouldn't I do that? So, yeah, I, I think we're going to see, at the very least, um, uh, battery tech on par with the Model 3 uh, installed in the S and the X this year. So, yeah, thanks for the question. That's a good one. Uh, Les asks, when do you think Tesla will have the Model 3s in their showrooms? You know, I think this will. This is probably much further out. Uh, I think Elon had said Q3 of last year, but really the, the challenge is, so here's, imagine what would happen, right? This is, in my head, I was thinking about this, like logistically, this would be a nightmare. Um, if, if they did it tomorrow, if there were Model 3s up in the showrooms, and they totally could do it, they have them, um, and they could ship, you know, a dozen of them or something. There would be lines out the door, like just just bananas at these stores. So I'm not sure they're going to do it. And they're really not trying to sell the Model 3. So they're kind of anti-selling it right now. So I'm not sure it would really help at all. Um, other than maybe it would bring people in and then they could try to upsell them on the S and the X. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I think this would be further out. You know, just like I get the same question. Maybe there's one down here um, about... Uh, about leasing a, a Model 3. Not an option. I just reserved mine. You can go watch it. Leasing was not a, was not a choice. I don't think you're going to see a leasing option for a couple years. Um, and so it's just because it doesn't make any sense for them. So anyways, long story short, I think it'll be a while. Thanks for the question. Hi, uh, John asks in your last YouTube video uh, about tax consequences of the Tesla Roadster. You may have a solution. If I remember correctly, it took 55 referrals. How about a co-ownership of the Roadster? We will split the taxes, the tax breaks. Hmm. That that, that uh, could be a solution. Maybe I'll start a GoFundMe account to pay for the taxes. Um, I I think we're gonna we're gonna have a solution here. Um, I was just I just got off the re I made that video because I had just talked to my my uh, my tax uh, guy, my accountant about it, and and, and uh, he those were the kind of scenarios that popped into his head. So I just wanted to share that with you um just to let you guys know so yeah uh, more to come on that thanks for the thanks for the idea john joseph asks um elon stated that tesla energy will be the focus of growth yep i'm wondering if tesla won't go out and build many of these 20 megawatt solar 
battery pack farms in the markets where they plan to build mega chargers. Yeah, it makes sense. I mean, uh, you know, I, I think what we're going to see with the semi, with the mega chargers and the semi are uh, very, very uh, high traffic routes. Let's say, you know, a ship of, of goods comes in from China and it lands in Long Beach, uh, California. Uh, then maybe from there it gets, it, you know, gets loaded up onto a semi truck. And then that goes out to, let's say an Amazon fulfillment center in Barstow, California. Uh, and then there's another Amazon fulfillment center, maybe in, in Arizona somewhere. I think you're just going to see, you know, like in a route like that, it's just totally flat through the desert, very well-maintained road. Uh, you know, and there's tons of desert nearby. So you could build ginormous solar farms. So, yeah, I think things like that are, are, are what you're going to see. And, and the rollout is going to be, you know, slow and very deliberate. Um, it, but then once people see it happening, that's when you're going to see this giant ramp of it, I think. So, yeah, thanks for the question, Joseph. I think it's a super interesting thing to, to, to keep an eye on. Guy asks, do you think the third party manufacturers will make custom better looking hubcaps for the aero wheels? Oh, that's a good idea. Uh, I feel like there might be a huge market for that. Yeah, I think I think custom rims are probably are already on the market. You know, there's several uh, companies I know making those um, hubcaps. Yeah, I guess so. Um, yeah, it's it's an interesting question. I, I kind of feel like they look great without the hubcaps either. So, and of course, once I get mine, I'll I'll you know show you what they look like. So, yeah, th yeah, stay tuned for that. I think we're going to see a whole aftermarket industry grow around the Model Three. I think this is going to be a ginormous year for anybody in kind of the Tesla sphere right now, kind of orbiting Tesla. Thanks for the question. Uh, Ronnie asks, hey, Ben, my wife and I will be getting our CPO Model S on the 6th. Congrats. Uh, do you suggest any aftermarket products such as tint? Okay, yeah, if you, if you, yeah, if it doesn't have it already. Uh, a special coating for the paint? I, yeah, this is a thing I know a lot of people do. I didn't do it. Um, yeah, I'm doing some updates on mine. Um, yeah, so I, I would recommend uh, hitting up Ben at Unplugged Performance in LA. They do all this kind of stuff. Uh, friends with them. I'm going up there uh, this week to actually get the front fascia replaced on, on my Model S. So stay tuned. Uh, you don't have a video uh, about that shortly afterwards. Um, but yeah, Unplugged Performance in LA. That's where I'd go to. Um, yeah, check them out. They're right where um, they're in the like SpaceX complex, right where the uh, the supercharger is there in Hawthorne. Um, so yeah, yeah, hit them up. Tell them, tell them um, you know, I, I sent you. Les asks, have you heard anything about uh, UU Zoo? And the Model 3 road trip? Nope. He's taking his Model 3 around the country, showing it. Uh, oh, is this the guy that lives in the UK? Um, he will be in Boston tomorrow at 8 a.m. Cool. Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, go check it out, guys. Um, I don't know. Look him up. UU Zoo. Uh, if I'm probably not saying that right. <laughs> uh, Model 3 road trip. Yeah, and, and again, I, I think this is great. I think a lot of folks are going to be doing this. I, I'm excited to do this. So um, stay tuned. Get on my email list because I, I will be likely doing a meetup uh, late January, early February with my Model 3 here in Southern California. And I don't know if we'll do test rides or anything like that, but uh, just, you know, you get to see it firsthand, maybe get some other Model 3 owners there, kind of have a, have a good time. Maybe we'll have someone cater it, whatever. We'll, you know, see, see how it goes. If we get enough people, um, have fun with it. So yeah, that that but that's cool. Yeah, go to Boston tomorrow at 8 a.m., folks, if you're interested in that. Uh, Walt asks, uh, will I still be charged a delivery fee if I'm picking up uh, th picking the three up in Fremont? I think you are. That's a good question. I'm actually not sure. I mean, I don't pick mine up in Fremont. Um, so, but you probably have a, a, a delivery fee, destination fee or something like that. Yeah, I'm guessing I'm guessing something. Maybe it's lower, but yeah. Thanks for the question, Walt. John asks, is there a substantial breakthrough in, um, if there is a substantial breakthrough breakthroughs in a battery technology, do you think the Tesla would ever have a program to exchange out the existing? Yes, 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 yes. In fact, I've seen it. Um, I know for a fact that they uh, uh, are likely to offer a, a 100 kilowatt hour uh, upgrade to cars like mine if they don't already. I've talked to them about it, but it was just stupid expensive. Um, and, and I've talked to other people and said that's coming. So yeah, I think so. Um, I, I don't know, you know, specifically what the details are, of course, but if and when they are, yeah, because I would, I'm actually keeping my Model S, my, my 60 kind of with that in mind that one day I'll be able to upgrade it to a much higher density pack. And once we get there, yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks for the question, John. Uh, Mike asks, uh, from the time a Model 3 reservation holder receives a Model 3 config invite from Tesla, how much time does Tesla allow them to place an order? Um, and any idea when showrooms uh, may offer test drives? 
Um, ideally, I'd like to test drive and make a decision on purchasing. Uh, yeah, I don't know about the test drive. I think that'll be down the road. Um, uh, I don't know how long you get to place an order, but you can do a hold my place um, if you're not sure, and then that may give you time there. So hopefully that helps, Mike. Uh, Frank asks, is there really a demand for autonomous driving? Personally, I love to drive and I wouldn't want to give that up that pleasure. Yeah, totally there is. Uh, just take a look at autopilot versus non-autopilot Teslas. You know, I, I call them driver's editions. Guy stole that from my buddy Ben at, uh, at Unplugged Performance in LA. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's a thing, um, for sure. Uh, people love that. And, and, and I think it, uh, it, you know, it makes sense. I think it'll be safer. It'll be better. Um, and you know, as someone that my first five years living here in San Diego, I took the train to work every day. Yeah. I, you know, not having to drive was a, was a real pleasure. So yeah, I'm not, I'm not a big driver, but understandably many people are. So there you go. Thanks for the question. Hey, it's 70 and sunny in Gilbert, Arizona today. All right. Um, I have some friends in Gilbert and I'm from Phoenix. So, uh, enjoy you guys. Yeah, it is. I think it's going to be 72 or something here today as well. Um, it's going to be warm. It's nice out in the sun, but in my office, it's kind of cold right now. So thanks for the question, John. Um, John Ellis asks, do you think that the uh, level three, four proper autonomous driving underestimates the complexities involved? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, I do. That's why I, I, I'm, I think it's going to... I actually think it's just about the, the, the roads and the infrastructure and the unpredictable nature um, of, of driving on roads with, with other humans. Uh, you know, if we could just snap our fingers and make all cars hundred percent autonomous, it would be actually very simple. Um, and you know, if the roads were all in good condition as well, but yeah, that's, it's just not, yeah. So there you go. Thanks for the question, John. Man, how many more do we have? We have a lot of questions left. All right, guys, go ahead and go vote. I'm going to cut this off, uh, at right at 60 minutes here. Um, I'd love to keep going, but yeah, definitely, um, a long one today. Everyone's excited about Tesla in the New Year, so that's great. <laughs> um, but go ahead and uh, go vote on the questions, please. We still have 16 left. Don't think we'll be able to get there. Um, I'm going to go start. Let me just double check. Yeah, I'll start with Barry's question here on top. Barry asks, um, since Model 3 doesn't have a spare, what do you think of the run flat tires? I have them, and the ride is a little stiff, but no reduction in gas mileage. Yeah, okay, so uh, actually have some, some insight on this. I don't know about the Model 3, but the Model S does not have the run flat tires. Uh, and I know that because my neighbor just had a flat tire, and he had to go get it repaired. Uh, the, the deal is that when you have a flat, you just call them and they're there in 20 minutes. I've done it. I've had it, uh, twice or three times and, and it's great. And they bring you a new tire and you're, you're good to go. Um, so yeah, I, th there's also a tire repair kit that you can take with you, um, and, and things like that. Uh, but yeah, I mean, run flat tires, if you can get them to fit and it makes sense. And then, then that's probably not a bad option. I don't believe the ones that Tesla, um, sells are that. Um, and, and I will say it's kind of interesting that, that there is a, uh, like the tires themselves, it, there's a lot of, of, of tech and stuff that goes into designing a tire. It's not just a, a, a very basic thing. So, um, you know, I might want to stick with the ones that Tesla makes because of that. Um, but in, in, because they, they provide support in other ways, but, um, if you do try it, let me know. I'd, I'd be curious. Thanks for the question, Barry. Brenda asks, do you have a feel for when, the, uh, for when the white interior will be available for the Model 3s? Uh, Ryan McCaffrey would have a better idea. If you're not familiar, he has a, a podcast called Ride the Lightning. Um, I think it has to do with uh, auto, uh, I'm sorry, auto wheel drive, with all wheel drive, um, uh, which will be coming out, I, they said spring, but it'll probably be more, more likely summer of this year. So to be a, a bit down the road, um, I, I do have another Model 3 reservation, and with that one, I'll probably be buying the, the more performance options and stuff. So when I go through that, of course, I'll share that video with you guys um, and, and let you know then. Thanks for the question, Brenda. Sonny asks, have you run some numbers on the new Model 3 versus the used Model S? I have, yeah. At what price range, at what price range it makes sense to go? Actually, no, I take it back. I did, I think I did it before the uh, before we actually had the details. So it was kind of speculative on the Model 3. I don't know if I've done it since, but it is on my list of videos to make. Um, let me see if I can just give you give you my best guess though. At what price range? It makes sense to go for a used Model S. Okay, here's my way of thinking of it. Uh, the price on a used Model S is similar to the price on a new Model 3. They're comparable. You know, they're within a few thousand dollars, depending on what options you get. However, so so the, the, the big thing for me is 
if you want the added storage and you're okay with a bit bigger of a car. Um, with the used Model S, you're not likely to get uh, Autopilot 2 or any of that stuff, uh, but honestly, for most people, that's fine. And it's still, it's it's great if you commute a lot and you need it, um, but but honestly, I, I don't have it and I don't miss it um, a, at all. So it's one of those things where, where it, you know, you don't know what you don't, uh, you don't miss what you, what you don't have kind of thing. And so, um, I would say it's based on storage and kind of the size of the vehicle are, are, are the big biggest factors in my mind. Um, I, I will uh, I will be doing a video on that, so stay tuned. And thanks for the question. That's a good one. Uh, Neil asks, how do you go about other financing options before taking delivery of a Tesla? Yeah, uh, so, and that's what I'm doing For if you didn't see my video. Uh, so what I did, uh, I got a... Um, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, what I did is, is uh, I have a bank here, uh, San Diego County Credit Union. I get my loans through them. Their rates are generally better than what Tesla offers me. Um, and so for my Model 3, I'm financing $30,000 of it. And I got a rate of 2.19%. The best that Tesla was offering me when I talked to them was 2.5. And on the website, they list 2.74 um, as kind of a, a, a range, depending on your credit score and things like that. So uh, when, you, when you go through the configuration, you just choose other and then they call you to make sure that you have it figured out so that's kind of where it comes through all right thanks for the question neil uh what is tesla by grammarly i don't know uh thanks tom um let's do walt's question since you will soon be getting your model 3 any word on what elon will do for early reservation holders no i've not got any word on that uh, I hope it's something more than a boring hat. Um, I hope it's something r cool like free supercharging, which would be fantastic. Uh, but maybe that's too big of a thing to 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 give away for free. Who knows? Um, yeah, you, you know, you'll probably know when I know. I'm sure you know he'll just tweet it out or something like that. So, um, and and if I do find out otherwise, of course I'll share that with you. Thanks for the question, Walt. Uh, what are your thoughts on the AP2 timeline for updates? Yeah. Full self-driving, I think, is 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 a long, long time away. The EAP stuff should be soon, as Elon kind of tweeted out recently. So, yeah, thanks for the question, Sai. Uh, Rosman asks, hello, any news about the status and production of the Model 3? I think, uh, well, we'll know more details soon. Um, based on what we've been seeing online, I think the ramp is, we're still at the base of it. I don't think we're really, uh, the ramp is really picked up yet. Uh, but hopefully in, in, in the next few weeks, we'll, we'll see some big numbers and then lots and lots of Model 3s coming out. So uh, thanks for the question. John asked, do you think it's pr uh, probable that Tesla might offer free supercharging to Powerwall or Tesla Solar customers? Huh. It's an interesting question. Um, I'm not sure it would totally apply, right? Because it, I think they're probably thinking of Tesla Solar and Powerwall. They're going to sell that to a lot more people that don't have Tesla cars. And so, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I it doesn't that doesn't totally align in, in my head. Um, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go with not likely. Thanks for the question, John. Uh, Dave Miller asks, I plan to see my first Model 3 by connecting with the current Model 3 road trip later this week. What are your thoughts on the Model 3 road trip going on now? Yeah, well, this is the second question I got about it. Apparently, I need to, to uh, look it up um, because I hadn't heard of it before. Um, unless it's the guy from the UK. I did see a, a, a photo about somebody taking it around, um, and then they're going to go back to the UK or something like that. Um, but yeah, I, I would expect, and, and maybe we can even organize something together as a community, uh, to get, you know, different meetups happening throughout the country, or maybe people are already doing that and, uh, you know, I'm behind the time. So, um, but yeah, if you're in Southern California, um, I, I'm, I'm likely to do one here, um, in the next month or so. Thanks for the question, Dave. All right, guys, I think that's all the time we have for questions today. Uh, I will try, if you, uh, didn't get yours answered, I apologize. Um, stay tuned, uh, for, more uh, later this week and more um, more next week as we do the, the Q&A section again. Uh, lastly, don't forget that when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you back here next time.